started to do was give them away to people. Hmm. Art, you've been with me. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was in a, well, Art, you were with me. Art, the other day, Art and I was some restaurant, and uh, this soldier came in with his wife, and they were having dinner. And I made sure that they were done ordering. And when I saw her bring the check, I just went up and got the check, took it, and paid it. I thought they were going to kiss me. Yes, they were. I mean, they were so excited. You were, you were there. They were so excited that somebody would do that. Have you ever done that? They were sitting in a restaurant and see a soldier come in or a sailor come in or one of the service men and sit there and thinking, you know what? I'm proud of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I spent three years of my life in the Army, but I could have been going to college and I didn't. I was in the Army, and so I look at this guy and I'm thinking, he's given up a lot of time for me. You ever go over and just take, a, take the check off the table and say, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. I'll, I'll just take that and buy that for you. Mm -hmm. And then flip down your card and say, if you're ever in Seattle and you want to go to church, come to Pastor McNeely's church. That's where the fire is. And he probably lives in Louisiana, Kentucky, God only knows, around the airport up there. Doing good things to people. You ever just call up somebody and just tell them, hey, I just want to check to see how you're doing today, and how you feel, and how's things going on? Those are called righteous deeds. Uh, you go into the hospital. My wife and I were asked a, few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, this lady, was, uh, this lady she drowned in a, in a swimming pool. They'd been in a coma for 12, 12 days. Wasn't it 12 days? And the lady called me and said, oh, pastor, please come up and pray for my mother. Uh, just please. Uh, and we, we need her to be healed and come out of that coma. And it was on a Friday night at 5 o'clock. And you know how traffic is going to Northgate at 5 o'clock on Friday night, do I have to tell you? We got in our little car and we went all the way up to Northgate, couldn't find, I never heard of the hospital. Kindred Hospital, how many have ever heard of Kindred Hospital? I've never heard about it in my life. It's right by the Northgate Mall up there. So we, we pull up to the, we pull in there and go up and, uh, and I go up to the, to the room and here's this lady, she looked like she's dead. And I just, I just prayed for, like Jesus. I know you, I know you, I know you're not into killing people, so that's why I'm here. And I just laid hands on her and prayed for her. Guy called me the next day, and they'd taken the ventilator out. I got excited. I well, praise God. I went up back. We went up there again. That shows you how we We went back up there again in all that traffic and prayed for her again. I haven't heard what happened. I, I, I really haven't. I, I, if, if she hasn't come out of the coma by now, it's, it's, it's. I don't, I don't know. Do, doing things like that, right. that only God knows about. Only God knows. They're not going to get her any reward from them. They're not going to do anything. Righteous deeds. Victory over the enemy. Victory over the enemy. His love for God. Your love for God uh, when you're born again. These are characteristics of being born again. There's a love for God. There's a love for the people of God. There's a love for people of God. And when people are in trouble, there's something in your heart that says, I want to help them. I, I want to do something for them. Not always being a taker. And it changes your prayer life. It also changes your prayer life. I like to go into my prayer time and just sit there and say, okay, God, talk to me. Talk to me, Lord. I need to hear from you. You don't need to hear from me. I need to hear from you. And you sit there and you listen and you let God talk to you and speak to you and, and minister to you. And then the last one is... Your love for God and also for your neighbor. Concerned about your neighbor. We must not, we must not make the standard so low so the transformation becomes a matter of natural reformation. In other words, what we've done, we've made the standard so low so way down here that just anybody can come in. Anybody can come in. And, and see, they've never had that born again experience. There's churches today filled with hundreds and hundreds of people that have never been born again. Now if Jesus said, yeah, come on, listen to me now. If Jesus said you must be born again, you need to be born again. Would you agree? Yeah. So if they're not born again, what's going to happen? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Jesus himself said, I don't have a choice on this. If Jesus said, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God or to enter into the kingdom of God, then you need to be born again. At the same time, we do not make, want to make the bar so high, so up here, so, so religious and so high up here that the new believer, if they fall, it's just like next to impossible to get them up. Or even some old timers, if they falter along the way. 
and fall, that we can pick them up and help them. See, this is the beauty of what Jesus covered. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and He's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what His Word says. So he, He's told us, okay, Dick, you need to be born again. I want you to share that with them. I want you to tell them that you gotta, they got to be born again. Number two, I want you to tell them that even if they do make mistakes after they're born again, there's a way to get justified. There's a way to get cleansed and go on serving me. I just want to close this quickly with the four steps of being born again. Now you'll have to, and on the internet, you'll have to judge this yourself. The number, the first step of being born again is knowledge. You've got to know. So if you've been deceived and thinking, you just got to go to church. We need to go to church on Sunday. Well, we're going to go to church. We're going to go to church. You go, there's a jillion churches. They're everywhere, on every corner, in every meeting in hotels, and motels today, and up and down the street, all over the place. But here's what the Bible says. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? That's your job. That's my job. You come here, I preach to you. You go out there, you preach to them. You've got to be a preacher. You've got to have the knowledge. It's not hard. It's not a difficult thing. Number two, it's, it's confession. First one is knowledge. Second one is confession. Both of them in Romans 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, you will be saved. That's confession. So first of all, you have to have knowledge. Secondly, you have to have you have to have confession. Number three, you have to have restoration. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. I call on the name of the Lord. I ask Jesus to come into my life. I ask Him to change my life. I confess of my sins. I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. That's the beginning of the born again experience. And the fourth one is possession. You got knowledge. You got confession, you got restoration, and then you got possession. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. This is, I, I like to call this new hearing. New hearing. Not just reading the Bible. There's a lot of people who just read the Bible. But they've never, can you believe this? They've never been born again. They've never been born again. They've never received that into their life. I was talking with a friend of mine the other day. And we were sitting in his, uh, in his church. And a lady came in. And, I, and she was talking, going on and on. And talk, talk, talk. And after he left, she left. I, asked, I said, Pastor, do you think she's born again? He says, she's never been born again. And she thinks she is. She's never had a she's never had a change in her life. She lives in the world just like everybody else does. And I'm thinking to myself, how sad. I, I don't know how this is affecting you. Maybe God's just dealing with me on this or something, but this has really stirred me up this last week as I'm sharing this with you. See, without a heart change or to be reborn from above experience, we are bound for problems in our Christian walk. Now let me tell you why. Because the flesh fights the spirit. Listen to this. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. That's in Galatians chapter 4 verse 29. You can read it yourself. It's all about Abraham. So my question today, have you come to the place in your life, in your walk with the Lord, that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I've been born again. I'm going to serve God. That's always my first question. Have you come to the place in your spiritual life that you can say for sure that if you were to die today, you would go to heaven? I am absolutely sure.